It's what spring breakers fear most, blood in the water, as they dodge clusters of hungry sharks migrating north off the east coast of Florida. But for thousands of sea creatures living in the ocean deep, steering clear of dangerous waters isn't an option. In this rarely seen underwater menagerie, survival depends on a fascinating and beautiful array of adaptations. ABC's Tanya Rivero dives in. Off the coast of Florida, thousands of spinner sharks migrating north and close to shore have closed beaches and frightened vacationers. The ocean is most on display when it makes us afraid. But what happens near the shore is only a sideshow. With three-fourths of our planet underwater, the main attraction lies beneath the surface. The diversity of life in the oceans is staggering. There are whole groups of organisms that have no counterparts on land. A world where courtship and mating, life, but especially avoiding death, plays out against an often alien landscape. Millions and millions of years, animals and plants evolved in the ocean and only relatively recently came out on land. That's why there are so many more different kinds of creatures in the ocean than there are on land. But the eternal dance between the hunter and the hunted is, for all its brutality, balanced. Creatures on the lower end of the food chain have developed astounding ways to protect themselves. The simple jellyfish with its stinging cells thrives and the blanket octopus can actually detach one of its lovely limbs as a decoy. And of course, there's always the ink. And the aptly named Spanish dancer is a sea slug who can fly. A lionfish has venomous spines and some hermit crabs attach poisonous anemones to their shells. And take these masters of disguise, the cuttlefish, the kelp-like sea dragon, and the stonefish. Many also use their camouflage to ambush their own meals. But sometimes something larger is the answer. If you think about the open ocean, there's not a lot of places to hide. Right. So one of the best places to hide is near something big, preferably something big with teeth. But even evolved defenses don't always work. This enormous school of lanternfish does nothing to stop the spinner dolphins who push them to the surface where there is no escape. Krill also seek refuge by forming a dense ball, which makes it harder for small fish to find a target, but allows the blue whale to gorge. They can't escape from the blue whale, which evolved to eat them. Scientists call it the evolutionary arms race because the prey have got to come up with solutions, but the predators have to keep up. Of course, part of a species' ability to survive is its reproductive prowess. The Asian sheep's head rats may have a mug only a mother could love, but his mating dance is still a success. Once a year, spider crabs molt and mate in a massive orgiastic pile. And for dolphins, sex is just part of being friendly. Amazingly, many coral reproduce just once a year, always at night, just after the full moon. An entire reef unleashes a blizzard of sperm and egg that unite to form new reefs, reefs that can expand hundreds of miles. And so it goes and grows. We're just beginning to understand how life works in the oceans. We haven't even begun to scratch the surface. But why should we care about the creatures of the deep? It is simply in our best interest. So many economies are absolutely dependent on healthy oceans. 15% of the world's protein comes from fish produced by the oceans. That's a non-trivial amount of food. If you care about living creatures, the wonder and magic and beauty of the oceans are something that you should care about. This kingdom of the oceans is ultimately our world. I'm Tanya Rivero for Nightline in New York. Fascinating. Who knew sea creatures were so frisky? Kingdom of the Oceans premieres March 10th on Nat Geo Wild. Check it out.